What's up boys, it's Nick from Team Table 501 here, I'm the King of the Scrubs, and today I am bringing you my updated Salamangrate deck profile for June 2019, it's basically June at this point, so June 2019, uh, obviously it's been a while, and that's a trend that you've been noticing a lot lately. <clears throat> I just don't really care at this point to be honest with you guys, like, it's not that I don't care about making videos because I do, I just don't have the time or the energy to do it, especially with Yu-Gi-Oh, because I've just like fallen out of the game at this point. I have not played a single regional, I have, I don't have my invite, I played one OTS and got ninth again. Like, I've done nothing to try to qualify for nationals. I play locals once every two months, if that, if I'm feeling like it. Like, a lot of what I do is just sit in my room and theory craft and have people play test the builds for me. Like, that's just what I do. Like, I'm more of the deck builder at this point than the, the actual, like, guy who goes and plays the tournaments. Which is weird, because just two years ago, I was trying really hard to grind and to get my invite, and then did, and then missed day two, but... Also, part of the reason I haven't played much Yu-Gi-Oh! is I won the RIW Games and Hobbies Mythic Championship Qualifier. So, I'm now qualified for MC Barcelona, which is where 90% of my time is going, between password paperwork and getting funding for the trip and making sure that I can actually do it comfortably over the summer without having to work 90 hours a week and hate my life. So, that's pretty much that. Uh, but as for as for this deck profile, uh, it's just a budget Salamangre deck I've been messing around with. It's something that I have been having a lot of fun playing at my locals when I go, and it's just a build that I've been trying to perfect over the last couple of months, something that I was going to take to my regional uh, but then I had to get, I got called into work, so I couldn't go. Uh, but as always, the link to the deck list will be in the description down below. My Facebook and Twitter will also be in the description down below. And that is about going to do it for the wrap-up. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions, per, uh, just send them to me, Facebook, Twitter, comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So, but without further ado, I guess let's just get into the deck profile. So like I said, this is budget Salamangrate, so there's no Phantasme, there's no Synet Mining, uh, there's no Borlo Dragon. And I would also like to emphasize that this isn't trying to be trendy, this isn't trying, I'm not trying to, like, send a message, I'm just doing it because I just don't own those cards. Obviously, if you own them, you want to play them. And it's not like Borlo and Mining are overly expensive, but still having to uh, pay... $30 a card or $20 a card is not something people want to do or $100 a card or whatever Phantasm is at right now so this is something that you can sleeve up, take to your locals, get some packs, call it a night uh, so for the Salamangrate monsters playing 3 Salamangrate Gazelle 3 Salamangrate Foxy and 3 Salamangrate Spinny so I'm playing 9 starters to an extent I'm really playing 6 Gazelle and Foxy are the true starters Spinny is the best extender a lot of lists have been playing two, and I think in general you should play two. But I also think that because this deck doesn't have sign at mining, it's a lot less likely that you're able to resolve uh, summoning Gazelle by pitching or spinning. Um, although you could, in theory, play two. But I guess I'm I guess I'm missing the point here. My point is, uh, if you have sign at mining, you, pr you probably should play two. If not, I think you should play three just to have the highest percent chance of opening both Gazelle. Both one gazelle and one spinny, even if it gives you a higher chance to open two spinny, because it doesn't do anything by itself. Like it's a it's a one card, like it's a one card plus one. But and then for the level fours, I'm playing uh, one falco, one foul, one jack jaguar. Uh, jack jaguar is obviously great. Falco is garbage, but I'm playing it because of some combos and the fact that it is a searchable light stage that can freeze the back row out of like Orcus and the mirror. And Falco is a card that can uh, get you back your your traps or your uh, quick play spell or your field spell as well. This can actually get back Sanctuary in the mirror because Foxy is the best card in the mirror. So. And the reason I say that is that sometimes Foxy is really annoying because Foxy can hit your Salamangrate Sanctuary and then you're burning resources on Link Summoning. Whereas you can just go like normal summon Gazelle, send Falco, uh, target Sanctuary, and then activate Sanctuary in the same turn. And then all of a sudden you're back doing your combos, which is like super good. Uh, so that does it for the Salamangrate Monsters. On to the Hand Traps. I play 3 Ash. 
three Valor, two uh, Ghost Ogre, and two D Crow. So I guess I'll go over these one at a time. Ash, obviously, I think is the best hand trap in the format right now. This card is insane. It hits like 90% of the cards that just exist. Uh, triple Valor. The fact that it's not once per turn is so huge. And being able to just like stop your opponent from full, fully comboing on you, or just being able to interact with something as simple as like the normal summon of a Foxy or uh, like a Kagari out of Sky Striker is super important. And you're not like in the, in the Thunder Dragon matchup, you're able to hit Saryusha's Gold Red, which is super good. Uh, the two Ghost Ogre, this is probably the weakest hand trap, but it's just another way to interact with your opponent. Also very good against Sky Striker, hitting the multi-rolls, uh, hitting the Shizukus, just being able to keep their board clear so you can get in your damage. Uh, and then main deck DD Crow. This is something that a lot of lists have not been doing because of cards like Phantasme, because they don't need to. But I think this card is actually just fine to main deck right now because it's good against a lot of the meta decks. Like, it's nuts in the Salaman Great Mirror. It's pretty good against Orcus because you can shut off their Dengrisu play or their Fog Blades or whatever. Uh, it's also decent against Sky Striker, being able to nab whatever Kagari is going to target, or stop one card from coming back off a multi roll, or even just getting the Ray out of their graveyard. This is a one for one answer for Ray, which is really relevant because otherwise you don't have a lot of good ways to answer Ray. Uh, and even against like the good rogue decks, like against Dinosaur, you can snag a Miscellaneous Saurus with this, or uh, you can just like grab random cards that matter because DD Crow can also exile any card in the graveyard, which is relevant. Uh, you're able to snag spells and traps with it in certain matchups. So that does it for the main deck monsters. I believe there are 22 of them. On to the spells. Three circle. We are obviously going to play three rota in your deck. Like, and then the one sanctuary. This card sucks. <laughs> like, this card just actually sucks. <laughs> Like, I'm not going to read the text of this card. <laughs> I just know it lets you reincarnate links, and it has, like, a battle phase effect, but no one ever uses it. <laughs> it's just so bad to draw. Uh, three Call by the Grave. This card is insane. Like, I still think this card should have been banned instead of being coming back to three. But, I mean, we have it. I'm going to use the crap out of it, and I'm happy. I bought my Super Fairies when I, when I did. And this is one of the main budget replacements in the deck. Instead of Infinite Impermanence, I'm playing three copies of Forbidden Chalice. So this card acts like Impermanence in a lot of ways. It is a way to negate monsters' effects. It is a quick play spell card, which means you get the versatility of being able to use it on your turn and your opponent's turn. The only downside is that this is, this cannot uh, this doesn't have the other upside of Impermanence of being able to lock out cards from that column for the turn. It also is not a hand trap. Uh, but in many ways, it does function like impermanence. It's gonna, it's gonna. Help. If you're going first, you just set it as a regular trap and interact with your opponent on their turn. Uh, if you're going second, it's gonna help you break apart the board that you have to deal with. Because, uh, say against the Danger Thunder Dragon de deck, for example, when they make their big board, impermanence and chalice are pretty much the same card. Uh, trying to break their board, but they're different cards when trying to stop them from making a board. If that makes sense, so. Uh, yeah, obviously if you have impermanence you can play impermanence or you can play like solemn strike over this if you wanted But I think this card's actually just really good Like for an infinite impermanence budget replacement It's actually not that bad and the fact that you can do damage depth shenanigans with this in the mirror is super relevant It means that your violet chimera is a lot easier to connect with and uh, You can just like shrink one of your, or your opponent's monsters or uh you can uh, make one of your own guys bigger. You can negate the uh, the Sunlight Wolf for the turn. Uh, two main deck twin twisters. Everything in the formats running spells and traps, even the combo decks. So this card's like a main state. I don't want to play three because I don't want to open multiple copies of twin twister, especially in my combo matchups. But I like having the ability to draw one. And then uh, one upstart, one monster reborn. Uh, Thirty nine is better than forty, and the reborn is actually it's been pretty solid for me so far. Like, you can just randomly get, like, some big dumb link out of your opponent's graveyard. Like, I stole a Boros Sword Dragon with this and killed my opponent with it. Um, but also, like, in the mirror, you can, like, take their Violet Chimera, or not their Violet Chimera, their Sunlight Wolf and link with it. You can take their Heat Leo and link with it. Uh, you, can, you can do something like Heata, take their thing, and then use one of your own things. And, like, this card can just generate a lot of advantage for you. Uh, that does it for the spells. I believe there are, uh, 14. <sighs> Now onto the traps. Two Paleozoic Dinomiscus. This is a card that I saw a lot of builds in the OCG were playing. And at first I did not understand why people were doing it. But now that I've played it, I understand why. This card is insane. <laughs> like, 
it is a way to answer problems game one that the deck doesn't really have ways to answer. And it also allows you to banish, uh, which is incredibly relevant. <sighs> Being just able to permanently answer a problematic monster or a problematic floodgate for the rest of the game is so relevant. And if worse comes to worse, you can use a, you can use one of your other traps to get back the Dynamiscus and then uh, link away with it. So, also another thing about this card that makes it different from Twin Twister is it does not discard for cost; it discard on resolution. So even if this were to get negated, uh, you get to keep the card, which is super good. Uh, and then one Salamangrate War, one Salamangrate Rage. Obviously, these cards are great. Uh, this card is recurrable negation. This card's on Fire Lake. If you get the rage loop going, if you have the, the time to set up Salamander Great Sunlight Wolf, getting this back and then setting it and then popping two cards a turn, you are not losing that game. You're just not. Uh, so that does it for the main deck. It's 40 cards, obviously. Uh, like I said, if you have cards like Phantasme, Synet Mining, Infinite Impermanence, uh, you should probably go ahead and play those cards. They're, they're, they have a price tag for a reason. They're very powerful. Uh, but I'm just showing you that you can play the deck and do well at a local level. Hell, you can probably get away with this as a regional level as well. It's not like Salamangrate's a bad deck. Like you're just playing this, you're just playing a Salamangrate strategy just with different card choices. Uh, that does it for the main deck on the extra deck. Uh, Batman, three ban links. You could probably get away with two, but I'm playing three for now. I don't really like the fact I have to play three of this card because this card doesn't do a lot for you. Because once you use the first one to get the si the sanctuary and the second one to trigger comp. The third one's pretty unnecessary, but there are some times you usually need to get a monster off the board, and you don't really care what happens with it as long as it goes to the graveyard. Uh, it's a way to get a monster off the field. Uh, three Sunlight Wolf. It's the win condition of the deck. This card is broken. I don't know why we still have this card at three. This thing's stupid. Uh, two Heatleo. This card is how you're mainly winning the game. Making your opponent's monster attack zero, and then smacking it for a bunch of damage. And the fact that uh, this can shuffle away a field full of Sky Striker spells. And then I'm sorry, I just don't own a Hita. I have one in the mail, I just haven't gotten it yet. Uh, but Hita is obviously insane. It's 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 dumb. It's probably not necessary, but yeah. Uh, if you don't have a Hita, or you don't want to buy a Hita, or you just you don't like the card, uh, you could play like Tornado Dragon, or uh, some people have been playing uh, Avermax as well. Uh, the Phoenix... And Ningirsu. Ningirsu is a little bit harder to make because I'm not playing Will. Uh, be I don't have a one card way to make this, but um, most of the time when you're making it, you're just trying to get a problem off the board, and this is a good way to do it. It outs Borolo Dragon in the mirror. It can help answer. Uh, it can just help you break apart bigger fields. It can answer a problematic Floodgate. And then uh, one Mirage Dalio, one Dweller. Uh, Dweller is the nut. <laughs> like, this card, if you're able to make this turn one against 90% of your matchups, you generally just win the game. Because it's so hard for your opponent to be able to play two turns without access to a graveyard. Especially when you're getting in three, four, five thousand 5,000 points of damage a turn. Uh, then Barash Dalio. I don't know why this card is a thing. Like, why is Invoker banned, but this isn't? Like, come on, guys. Uh, and then Violet Chimera, Starving Venom, Fusion Dragon. These are my Super Polymerization targets. And that does it for my extra deck onto my side deck. Uh, side deck wise, I have three copies of Droll and Lockbird. Uh, this card is very good against Danger Thunder Dragon, uh, which is the main reason it's on the side deck. It's also okay against Sky Striker, because that way they only get one engage search instead of like five or six. Uh, and then three Artifact Lancia, being able to shut down Orcist is fantastic. Also, being randomly good against Rogue decks is great. Uh, double Gamma Seal. I'm doing two Gamma Seal, two Pankratops, so the reason that I'm doing the 2-2 split is Pankratops is a hard once per turn, which means drawing multiple Pankratops makes your hand super dead, whereas if you draw, like, uh, you can do multiple Gamma Seals in a turn, whereas you can't really do it with Pankratops. And what I mean by that is, like, you can give your opponent a Gamma Seal, Mirage Dolly will back the Gamma Seal to your hand, and then give them the Gamma Seal again, whereas uh, Pankratops, you can only answer one card once, uh... And again, they're obviously for different things. Like, Pankratops comes in basically every time you're going second. Answers pretty much any problematic card on the board. Uh, Gamma Seal can out the big monster boards. Also very good against Sky Striker, locking out all their 
uh, widow anchors and jamming ways and all those other cards. Uh, even in the mirror, just giving your opponent, like, sometimes your opponent will make a board of, like, Sunlight Wolf and 1XE, so you can just Kaiju the Link Monster and then Salamence, and then both the traps are shut off for the turn. Uh, and it's not that hard to run over in the mirror. And then, I'm sorry, I only own one Super Polly because I didn't think this card would be coming back to two, but it, it did. So, two Super Polymerization. Oh, uh, this card is broken. Like, I don't know why the hell we have this card. Like, this thing is stupid. <laughs> I know I've been saying that a lot, but this card's actually broken. Like... It's just like, oh, I'm going second, you make a dumb big board full of negates, well, too bad, I outskilled you by activating Super Poly and I break your board and kill you. Like, who does, I want to know who decided this was a okay card to come back to two, but. And then, uh, the auto win against Striker going first, two anti-spell, one Imperial Order. <laughs> so that's going to do it for my budget Salamangre deck profile. Um... I didn't price it out exactly, but it, it can't be more than a hundred bucks. The most expensive card is probably uh, the Super Polymerizations. They're like ten bucks each. Um, and like, you don't even have to play Super Polymerization, but I think the card is like so dumb that you probably should. Uh, but other than that, you know, three structure decks, a few cards here or there, you have the entire thing. Like Drolls have been reprinted, so they're only like two or three bucks each. Gamma Seals are only, like, four or five. Order and Anti-Spell are only a couple of bucks. Starving Venom is only a few bucks. Like, Hita and Phoenix are not that expensive. Everything else comes in the Structure deck outside of Sunlight Wolf, and even then it's only a 2 to $3 rare. So, the deck is super affordable now, and... You know, like I said earlier, it's it's a solid deck. You can probably take it to your locals, get your, get your four packs for the night. Um, you could... Uh, this is also something that, like, if I had to play a regional tomorrow, I would probably just play this deck. Um, this build as well, like, I think it's, like, it's fine. Like, not having the expensive cards is definitely going to hurt you, but I don't think it's too much of a hindrance to where you couldn't, like, get your invite on a good day if you play super well. Um, but... Yeah, that's going to do it for this video, guys. So thank you thank you so much for staying with me over the last few months. I just really have not been interested in Yu-Gi-Oh, like I said. But... This, this deck is the reason that I can, like, once a month we'll go to my locals. I just love playing this deck. I think it's super fun. So, uh, leave any suggestions for the deck in the comment section down below. And like I said earlier, Facebook, Twitter, and deck list will be in the description. And yeah, that's, that's going to do it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that good shit. My name is Nick from Team Table 501. Thanks for watching, and get good scrubs. I'll see you next time.